Hello. In this demo, let's talk about automatic backups in Open Admin Tool or OAT. I'm Sumanth Rajagopal, software engineer at IBM, working on Open Admin Tool for Informix. Once you log in to OAT, on the left navigation menu, open up Space Administration and click on Backup. When automatic backups aren't configured in OAT yet, you are presented with a pop-up asking if you want to configure it now or not. If you choose not, then you could still see the status of any backups that have been done outside of OAT on the status panel. And if you choose later to do the configuration, you could go into the configuration tab and click on configure to bring the wizard back up. For this demo, let's go ahead and click Yes to configure a backup. Informix has two utilities to do backups, the on bar and on tape. While on bar can do parallel backups and needs a storage manager to do backups, the on tape does serial backups and doesn't need a storage manager. The Informix Info Center has several differences, several other differences between these two tools, which we won't go into detail here. Also, for the purposes of this demo, I've configured the Informix Primary Storage Manager, which now ships with the Informix server since version 12.10. A quick way to configure the Informix Primary Storage Manager is to set up the onconfig value in the info box on this slide. We'll first look at on bar and then later on in the demo look at on tape. So we click next to proceed with this wizard. In this second page of the backup wizard, you could do two things configuration and scheduling of backups. Configuration is essentially setting certain on bar parameters in the on config. In this basic view that you see here, you could configure the backup speed and the number of generations to retain. The backup speed corresponds to the number of parallel backup streams. So more the backup streams, the faster the backup. And the faster the backup, more memory is used. The slider is a function of the number of non-critical spaces. Non-critical spaces being defined as those spaces that are neither the root DB space nor those that contain physical or logical logs in them. Each tick interval is about a tenth of the number of these spaces. OAT configures whole system on bar backups corresponding to the command line dash w option, which does a checkpoint and backs up the whole system. Let's increase the speed up two notches. Now let's look at the advanced view where some of these backup parameters can be further configured. Here in the advanced view, you could configure a few, few more backup parameters, especially the buffer size and number of buffers per backup stream. The parallel backup streams too, you could configure it at a finer granularity than in the basic view where the finest granularity you could do is one tick interval which is a factor of 10 of the number of non-critical DB spaces sorry of the non-critical spaces I should say not just DB spaces while the default values here for the Informix primary storage manager are the minimum recommended values for best use of the technology, you could still uh, configure them per your requirements. So let's go ahead and modify the buffer size and the parallel backup streams. Oh, by the way, uh, the advanced view and the basic view are synchronized. 
so if you were to change the parallel backup streams or the number of generations to retain on this page or the basic the other view gets synchronized automatically let's go back to the basic view and here we see the thumb of the slider has gone down a tick interval notch to sync up with the parallel backup stream change we made in the advanced view now that we're done with the configuration let's go ahead and schedule some backups let's do two schedules one for a level zero for Saturday at 1 a.m. and for a level 1 backup at 2 a.m. on Tuesday. So moving on to the next screen this is a review of the configuration we've made so far so the configuration and the schedule information is on the left and on the right are the catalog log and data directories configured for the primary storage manager once we've configured the changes to our requirements we go ahead and click finish so the changes are persisted on the server we get a confirmation like you see on the top that the configuration was saved successfully once we are done configuring the backup we click done and we are taken to the status tab where the schedule is reflected under the time until the next backup column let's move on to the administration tab to see what we can do there here in the administration tab we have the ability to do on-demand backups as we can see our next level 0 backup is in 12 hours let's say we need a backup sooner than that like right now so we can go ahead and click the backup button to do an immediate backup we get a confirmation box asking if we really want to go ahead with the action and a message that the task to start the immediate backup was submitted to the server once the on-demand backup has been submitted to the server we are taken back to the status tab and here we click refresh and see that the backup has completed next let's go to the configuration tab and see what we can do there so as you can see the configuration tab has the parameters the configuration parameters and the schedule as we set in the wizard so we could make changes here and persist them on the server so let's go ahead and make a couple of changes and update them the new level 2 backup that we've added here will be reflected in the status tab as we'll see here next let's go to the logs tab two things are displayed here on the top half is any backup related SQL admin API command is listed in the table 
and in the bottom is a listing of the on-bar activity log. Finally for on-bar, let's go back to the configuration tab to do one last piece of action. If on-bar configuration and scheduling is all that you wanted to do, you're done. But let's just consider one scenario. Let's say the drives managed by the storage manager goes offline. So OnBark cannot back up your system now. Either for that reason or for some other reason, you want to continue taking backups using OnTape, you would need to do the following at this point. You could use the reset button that you see on the top right here on this page. What this does is it removes any of the schedule information that you've set in this wizard. And it essentially takes the backup module to its initial state as if none of the schedules were set. From there you are able to bring the wizard back up and configure on tape like we'll see next. Click yes to restart the configuration wizard. We choose on tape and then move to the next page. In on tape too, just like on bar, you could configure, schedule, and monitor backups. For configuration, you could specify the storage device for backup as either a tape, disk file, or a disk directory and configure the block size. So let's go ahead and set up a backup to a disk directory and set up a couple schedules for the backup. and click next to move to the next page of the wizard so this page lets you review the on tape configuration and schedule so once we think the parameters are as per requirements go ahead and click finish to persist the changes on the server the result from the server is reflected on the top in this case the backup configuration was saved successfully. Click Done to move to the Status panel. The Status tab, as in the on-bar case, shows the time of any last backup and also the scheduled future backups. The bottom half of the tab shows the status by space. We should note here that this status tab shows the status of any last backup regardless of it if it was scheduled through OAT. Next let's go to the administration tab. The administration tab like an on bar lets you do on demand backups. In this case let's try a level 1 backup. Once the level 1 backup has been submitted to the server, you are brought back to the status tab. From experience with the 
data in these DB spaces and other spaces, we know that the backup should have completed by now. So let's go ahead and click refresh to refresh the backup information. The data in the status tab for the level 1 backup hasn't refreshed. Let's try refreshing it one more time. The data still hasn't refreshed. Hmm. Let's check the logs tab to see if we can figure out something. From the most recent entry on the top, we see that the on tape backup directory has incorrect permissions. Let me in the background go to the server and fix those permissions. And then go to the administration tab. I have now fixed the directory permissions on the server. Let's try to schedule this level 1 on-demand backup again. Back in the status tab, we now see that the level 1 backup has succeeded. Let's go back to the logs tab to see the updated logs. Here as expected we see the most recent entry for the successful level 1 on tape backup. Now let's go back to the configuration tab to take care of one last piece of business. The configuration tab as we know lets us modify any of the configuration parameters or the schedule. Let's go ahead and add a schedule for the missing level 2 schedule. And before we leave this tab, just a reminder that the reset button is here in case we wanted to switch the configuration back to onboard at some time in the future. Once updated, we go back to the status tab and here we see that the level 2 schedule has been updated. This concludes the automatic backups in OAT demo. Thank you.